here we have the uh, black Scholes equation we have just derived and here we're going to say just a couple of things related to this uh, black Scholes uh, equation so again this is a second order we have here a second order derivative a two-dimensional because it just depends on t and s as independent variables uh, that's linear because it doesn't appear the square of the uh, parts of the second or first order derivatives. It's a parabolic because ABSC uh, uh, fulfills the uh, relation between them in order to be uh, the PDU to be a parabolic partial differential equation. So uh, if it's linear, uh, basically means the following uh, that if we add together two solutions, so you have a v1 is the, supposed to be one is a solution and v2 is a solution if we add together then v1 plus v2 and have v3 a different one this one's going to be a solution also for the black source equation that's the implication of being linear then it's a parabolic so remember that parabolic equation was the diffusion equation remember what happens in the diffusion equation so basically we have the following that even if we start with a discontinuity in the final data due to discontinuity in the payoff, for example, for the diffusion equation, for example, let's suppose we have the, uh, your uh, final or your payoff, uh, it's like a, uh, it's, it's like a, a binary uh, uh, call option that behaves like that, that this is like one, if it's uh, higher than the strike price that considered to be E, and uh, zero if the asset is lower than the strike price. So it has a sharpness here because it goes from zero to one. It's a huge sharpness here. So due to the diffusivity or the probabilicity of this partially free equation equation, then the evolution of this uh, uh, option price here, because here basically we are plotting here the option price. In this case, it will be the payoff. It will be just at the maturity time but uh, your, so the value of this option uh, on, the, on, on the evolution of this option value on time it will get diffused and basically means that this uh, discontinuity will get uh, smooth out due to the diffusive nature of the equation this is therefore we expect it to be something like that so it will be smooth out so as it happens, for example, in the case of, uh, of the diffusion equation, if you consider a wire, that half of the wire has one temperature and the other half has another temperature, so you have here a sharp discontinuity just in the middle, this, that difference, that, and this is the initial temperature of the wire, that, uh, that uh, difference will get smooth and the cooler will get and the cool areas will get warmer on time and the warm areas will get cooler on time so that the differences the differences that will get uh, smaller on time that's due to the uh, parabolicity of this uh, partial differential equation so uh, it's also, it might be interesting also uh, to have uh, just a look at the different contributions that appears in the um, in the black Scholes equation here. So for example, we have this uh, contribution here. It just basically, it looks like a diffusion equation, a simple diffusion equation. So uh, we can say that this is a basic diffusion contribution. So that again, uh, due to this, mainly due to this contribution here, any discontinued in the payoff will be instantaneously uh, diffused away. And uh, the diffusion equation, the thing is that the diffusion equation, these uh, variables here, you can see here, it depends, it's not a constant, but it depends on the, uh, uh, on the asset uh, value. Then you have another contribution here, which is just proportional to uh, um, uh, first derivative of U with respect to S. So as you consider this, uh, you consider therefore that sigma is zero, considering the sigma is zero, then you have these two contributions, and it's like, uh, it's like it, it's similar to that vection equation here so it's like so therefore according to that where in this case the c appearing here it will not be a constant but will depend on s but basically you have a, an advection equation so it will be like moving the payoff will be moving from one side or, or to the other side depending on on um, uh, uh, okay in this case it's positive so it will be 
moving to, to the right, in this case, or to the left, depending how the time is considered. And then you have another term here, which is uh, can be considered a, a reaction term. So basically means that we just uh, make this diffusion equation, uh, diffusion contribution here, zero, and this contribution here coming from the advection equal to zero. Then this one, the remaining one, will be just this one. And this is just what we can consider the uh, reaction term, or basically is the the one which updates the value of the app, the option, because if you you can actually you can solve that equation uh, exactly, uh, because basically it just depends on uh, it's just a change on time, so that partial derivative it becomes like uh, it becomes like a normal derivative, uh, it's it's like a normal derivative, so so yeah. Therefore, you can substitute that partial derivative with a normal derivative, and solving that equation is pretty much easy. Just you bring everything which depends on v on one side, and everything which depends on t to the other side, and we integrate that, and basically you have that the option will be just a constant, or basically the value, the initial value of the option times uh, 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 exponential uh, a two, which is the exponent to uh, exponential two. Uh, r times t. So this is the discount value of the option price of function of time. Basically. So that may be interesting in order to check, in order to see uh, what, what different contributions you can distinguish here inside the black source equation that could, be, could help you in order to understand how each term here will contribute to the uh, option equation. Um, to the evolution of the option option price, and for that I think it might be interesting to check, for example, the, uh, this example here. So here in this example, we are just solving the evolution of the uh, payoff that the digital call option. So remember, uh, with the strike price ten euros and the maturity time one year. So basically, it means that the payoff is the following: this digital one. It means that, as we have said before that if the, uh, the maturity time, if the uh, uh, value of the asset, because this is just, we are just plotting the value of the uh, option as a function of S at the maturity time. So if the value of the asset is higher than the strike price, in this case, one euro, then you will get one. So that will be one. If it's lower, it will be zero. That will, that's the payoff. But of course, just uh, evolving on time, as for uh, um, lower times, the evolution of the payoff will be uh, will be different. And in the evolution of that will depend on uh, different contributions we do have in the black holes equation. So here, in order to distinguish different contributions, we are make different. We are going to consider different cases here. So the first case we have considered. Uh, is that where the uh, interest rate is uh, for it's it's it's, uh, uh, it's very big it's 0.4 so 40 percent it's very big in order to see uh, the effect of that and the sigma the volatility the annual volatility it's just zero so in this case we don't we don't have the diffusion uh, diffusion contribution we just have the uh, the advection, just checking the black source equation to see that there is no diffusion in this case. So basically, you have that would be the payoff, the one we have shown here, and that uh, we are plotting here in two different lines, uh, uh, different uh, values of the option. So the one in in green here, it will be the uh, value of the option a uh, half a year before the uh, maturity time. And the one in, 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 in blue here is one year before the maturity time. That's considering the maturity time is just one year, basically means that the one in blue here, it's, uh, it's the value of the option when the contract is signed. Okay, so it's the price basically that you have to pay for the option if you, if you want to, to buy it. So as you can see here, basically you can say, you can see is that this front is moving here to the left, and besides that, you are discounting this value of the option here because of the interest rate we are 
having here. So you have a discount of the value of the option for the same goes back and uh, besides that you also have a discount here on the strike price. That will, that's, that's why you have this front here is moving here to the left because of the advection contribution. So it's like a wave that's moving here to the left but at the same time it's getting smaller because of the contribution associated with the reaction time to the reaction term here to this term here. So the first case in this first case the sigma is zero we're just considering these two terms with plus the time derivative here. It's just the this is just the advection equation and this is the discount contribution we have just we have uh, mentioned before. So this is like the first case. The second case here we'll just consider just somehow the opposite. In this case R is going to be zero and you just have the contribution associated with the volatility. Uh, in this case we are going to, going to consider nano volatility of 25 percent which uh, uh, and this is the results that we do have here because here on the left considering that volatility is zero is just a very uh, a very uh, uh, unreal case where this, the, the, the variable, the asset, is not following a stochastic process. So everything can be predetermined uh, beforehand because there is no stochastic contribution. And actually, you will know if uh, you, uh, what's going to be the value, the exact value of the asset uh, of, the, of, the, of the option. But in the second case where the interest rate is zero but there is a volatility, you do have a stochastic contribution. So uh, here in this case, uh, again, we are considering the same payoff. Um, here we are plotting uh, in green and in, in blue uh, the value of the option a half a year before and a year before. As you can see, you just have here in this case a diffusion contribution and this uh, discontinuity it gets smooth because of the diffusion contribution, uh, which basically means that uh, going back in time, even though the asset price, for example, is lower than the strike price we are considering, lower than 10 euros in this case, you will have to pay for it uh, for in order to contract the the uh, uh, the option because there is a chance later the uh, asset will take a high value than the one it will have at this moment. That's why you have a moment. Of course, the pay or the price you will have to consider will be higher if the asset value is uh, higher than the strike, higher than that. Okay, for example, if we are here, the price will be increasing with the value of the asset. But of course, it will never be as, as much as one, uh, as, as, as one, that will be the one, the value that you will get at the payoff, because there is also the chance that for, the asset, for the asset, as the time goes by, to go, to go lower than the strike price, so that it will, it will fail to get, uh, it will fail to, uh, to get the, the option. So that's the evolution of the uh, of the um, uh, option uh, price in this case, no interest rate and just volatility. And we just have the two of them. You can see that that will be the solution of this binary when you have uh, this interest rate and this volatility. You have this, this a combination of these two here. It's moving here to the left at the same time. It's getting diffuse. You can see here. Okay. So uh, it's actually I think it's it's interesting in order to have it's interesting to have an intuition of the evolution of the payoff and understand this evolution just in terms of considering having in mind what's the effect of this basically these two main parameters we do have in the equation which are the uh, interest rate and the volatility because as we have said before in the equation there is no effect here on the strike price, on the maturity time, or the average uh, rate growth of the of the asset, no effect of them that you can see. There's no parameters. These parameters they do not appear in the equation. These parameters, basically these two parameters, of course, they are they appear in the boundary conditions or in the uh, in this case, for example, this is the boundary condition. You can see here the boundary conditions here depends on the strike price we are considering. And of course, in the in, in the initial condition, where um, 
okay, this is the boundary conditions and the initial condition where this strike price also appears and also the maturity time as well because this is the, uh, the, the, the maximum time you have to consider and you have to go back on time until t equals zero in order to establish which is the value of the option at the time of the, of the contract. 